Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play Rompa: Trigger Happy Havoc. So in the last episode, we made it here to Hope Speak Academy and realized that Hope may not be on the rise. Now, we leave the area. So we have to go to the gym, right? Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Surprisingly, I actually know the way around the school fairly well. God, I had no idea this Hope Speak Academy place was going to be such a pain in my balls. It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse. And why isn't anyone here walking through the halls? I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that, like, seriously not good? They're just trying to smoke us. Then they'll take those metal plates down later. I'm sure of it. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Shit. Well, hell, ain't like I'm scared of nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, whoever is who? Where is whoever called us here? Mondo, stop! No running! I too shall go. Hey, wait! Don't leave me here alone! Okay, time for some more tutorial action. You can talk to them now if you want, I guess. Yeah. Display case, there's all kind of trophies and plaques inside, of course, blah blah blah. Okay. I won't read everything, but I'll just kind of read through it myself. If people want to read it, they can stop themselves. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? Oh, I didn't need to. Okay. All right. This is bad. I'm totally getting a bad vibe right now. Still filled with uneasy dread, I did what the announcement said and went to the gym, and I saw what was waiting for us there. How oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Yo. See, I told you, it's totally normal entrance ceremony stuff. Here was right, but in a way, that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there, howdy, hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! Dangan Rumba. Teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma! And I am this school's headmaster! It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was. What I was seeing was. It was utterly incomprehensible. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place, and all that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. What? This teddy bear can jack? Come down! I'm sure there's just a speaker inside it! Told I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear! I'm Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster! What? It moved! Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How oh, dare you compare me to a child's plaything! Oh, yeah, you've got me deep! Deeper than Mariana Trench! My remote control system is so complex even the folks in NASA can, can, can't recreate or even comprehend it! But that did, But don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dream! I just couldn't bear it! Bear? That? Really, you are unfortunate. Now then, moving on, we must really hurry and get started. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then. Quiet down now, quiet down. Ah, okay, so. 
He has abandoned the gag. Good morning. Everyone's standing at attention and bow. And good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. What's your problem? Nugget. You don't have to say it back. Yeah, I really. Now, now then, let us commemorate with a noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here would be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you all live a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in a harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Uh, now then, regarding the end date for this communal life, uh, there isn't one. In other words, you'll be here until the day you die, such is the school life you've been assigned. What did you just say? Until the day we die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. But that's the least of our worries right now. Hmm. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? I am not screwing with you. I'm no liar of that. You can be 100% uh -huh. sure. I uh, just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about the dirt, dirty, dirty land beyond those walls ever again. Cut off? So all those metal plates all over the school? They're, th they're there to keep us trapped in here? That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you, you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Damn you. Yeah, cut the shit out. It isn't funny anymore. Unbelievable. Keep saying this is a liar, joke, a bunch of skeptics, all of you. Do? But I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable That's truth. Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? Come now, what's the matter with all you? You decided of your own free will to attend Hope Speak Academy, didn't you? And now, beyond the uh, before the entrance ceremony's even finished, you've already decided you want to leave? Um, oh, but you know... I guess I did mention, forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the stool. Really? Actually. As Headmaster of Craft with a special clause for these, those of you who'd like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if somebody were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know, if one person were to murder another. Murder? Stabbing, strangling, budgeting, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting, how you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. The rest is up to you. Give it all your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst po way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. <laughs> I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of some human catching salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hopes of the world, but you know, taking that hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. And I just find that so darn exciting! To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. We know what it means, that's not the problem! Why do we have to kill each other? Yeah, stop blabbering on with all the nonsense! Let's just go home already! Blabbering? 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 What do you mean blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on! You guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go, let us go! You keep on saying the same things over and over and over! Listen, from this moment on, the school is your home, your life, your world, got it? And you can kill as much as you want to kill, so go ahead, go on a kill, kill, killing spree! Alright, come on. How long are you going to keep this up? 
You got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us. So you can go on and reveal the trick now. Reveal the trick? I'm right, right? Yeah, because, I mean, you know, there's also some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like... Dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way! Shoving Hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. Listen up, asshole! This shit's gone way too far! What the hell kind of joke is this? Joke? Like, what do you mean, like your hair? <sighs> Roared out, and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself in the air. He flew up Monokuma fast and straight as a bullet. He walked onto his target. Gotcha, you little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds! What? The violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! Hey, damn it! What, no smartest comebacks this time? Piece of shit! Stop this goddamn beeping and say something! Oh, shit. Watch out, get rid of it! Huh? Huh? Hurry up and throw it! I know if her veracity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word he did what he was told. He threw Monokuma, and as soon as he did... The hell? That sure shit wasn't a joke, it blew the hell up! There was a painful ringing in my ears, and I s could smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the times in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life, I'd never seen anything like it. But, you know, this means that the teddy bear's been destroyed, right? Hey! I told you I'm not a teddy bear! I'm Monokuma! Damn you! You son of a bitch! You seriously tried to kill me just now! Of course! Well, yes, I was seriously trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school reg regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you'd better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. This is bad. Hey, so does that mean there's like a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokuma's have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, uh, you all just saw what happened, right? <laughs> and I won't be so forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. That's not even punishment! That's just wrong! Well? Now then, lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. Hmm. <laughs> yes, well, moving on. The handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it'll display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. Ah, uh, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, and it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to that Space Age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. You'll hear me say this a lot more, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Rules restrict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be at our chaos without laws. The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishments in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya! And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. So guys, how would you define what we just experienced? We have to live here forever? Or kill? What just happened? Calm down. Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's just take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we stay here. Each stay here, living a communal life and together until the day we die. And the other choice is... Mm -hmm. If we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? That's... 
killing someone that's... We were protected out of nowhere and stuff to this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... This is... This is... What is this? A life. That's what it is. Oh, well, these ridiculous... Th a lie. That is... Why? Okay. Uh, that we've heard. This all has to be fake. Right. Now it doesn't matter if it's real or fake. What matters is, is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is someone going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. This school, which had become out of nowhere to raise my hope so high. It's not a school of hope. It's... A school of despair. Welcome to despair. The end. Surviving students, 15. Spike Chinsoft. You received the school crest present. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. Chapter 1. To Survive. Daily Life. Surviving daily life is actually pretty difficult. <laughs> but as for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to appear it was her okay. sharp words. So, what are you going to do now? Hey. Just stand around glaring at each other? Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us all back to reality. Right! She's right! Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you must- you have to step forward. To forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself, I'm so ashamed! Please, someone hit me! I can't forgive myself, someone hit me! Punish me! Huh? Jesus, if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. Perhaps, but... What is that mission exactly? Stupid. What the? And we and we totally need to find whoever was controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of him. But, 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 
before we do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out all the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. So then... Fine, let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. Makoto Naegi. After shooting on my himbo, the first thing that appeared was my name. So just like Monokuma said, the owner's name showed up front and center. Then, from the main menu that popped up, I select the school regulations icon. An itemized list appeared on screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the rules being imposed on us all. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving campus is an unacceptable use of time. Nightfall is from 10pm to 7am. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and be punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Speak Academy at your discretion. Violation of violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student becomes blackened, and becomes gla blackened will graduate, unless they are discovered. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's faces. This is bullshit! What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me! Well, and why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens if someone breaks one of the rules. But if he got punished like that when we saw him before, I don't think there'd be a respawn waiting for him. Yo. I ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it even if it kills him. What? So what? I've made a ton of promises I still have to keep, so that's Jesus so shit. what? So I can't afford to die in here. None of that made much sense to me, but you're saying you will follow the regulations, is that it? That's true. Huh? Oh well, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, hey, um, I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? You're talking about the second half, right? Where it says, unless they are discovered? I was wondering about that myself. It's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But, but why? Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worrying about following the rules as they've been explained Such to us. Ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. <laughs> don't jab at me. That face. Hmm. Well, for now, let's forget about all that silly junk about murders or whatever. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. True! We need to find out where exactly we are! Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? There's some questions we need to answer! I hope he's going alone. What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying that we should just stand around with them in our midst and make that uh, that much easier for them? Hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. That would never... What? Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you seized up from fear when the graduation rule was made clear to you. Am I wrong? Um, but... <laughs> so I'm simply, simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for just me. Just hold on. Hold on, like how I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever you want. Out of my way, Plankton. What? The fuck's that supposed to mean? One tiny bit of Plankton, drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. I'm gonna kick your ass. Stop it, we shouldn't fight. 
The fuck you say? You some kind of goody goody little bitch? Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You think you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't. The fuck you. He punched me, and I flew back in a heap. It was like someone straight up, something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just suddenly right there in my face. One second I was standing there, the next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten the kind of people I'd been trapped here with. My common sense just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuses. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. But I just lost track of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade. So I have a question, yeah. Cass. Yeah. We're not we're not allowed to be unconscious. We're not allowed to sleep anywhere except for the dormitory. This is not the dormitory. I mean, if it's unconscious, they don't count that as sleeping. I I I wonder how that works. Like if someone were to give somebody like you know, sleeping pills and they were to fall asleep in the gym. I think it's like killed? voluntarily sleeping somewhere other than the dormitory is against the rules. Okay. If I was just curious you because to fall asleep, I don't think it counts. Okay, I was just curious. Because Monokuma um, would think that's like they're trying to murder you, so it's like part of the thing, I guess. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you got Monokuma to do your dirty work for you, then sweet. Uh, besides that, I had one other question. During the intro cutscene thing, yeah. um, it showed like a trial thing going on. Okay. And it showed an outline. Did it just flat out spoil who the first person on trial is? Yeah, I saw that. It spoiled about three of them. Yeah, I noticed one of them and I thought I saw another and I went, wait, 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 I don't know anything about that. What? So I might have gotten spoiled by my also misinterpreted the... I mean, you already know who the first person dies. I mean, yeah, the first person I, the first person I said I knew, but you know the, the other first, person I... You know the first two. I wasn't talking about the first two. Oh, well, but yeah. before it finally forget, finally cut out completely. Just forget about it. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... Uh, huh? Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so... Where am I now? <sighs> You don't have access to the handbook menu. You can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Okay. At certain points, maps and truth bullets may not be available. Okay. So, we do not have access to the map or the truth bullets. I mean, we don't have any truth bullets yet. We don't even know what they are, so we just don't have access to them. Look at that lint roller. Okay. This must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain, which means it must be mine, right? I better hang on to it for now. Also, my favorite item in the entire game. A lint roller? Yep. Considering how many times in this game when we were doing the stream before I clicked on that thing? Yeah, a little bit. I'm just investigating everything in the room, so yeah. Rattle, rattle. Huh? It's not opening. I guess it's locked. <laughs> Each room's locked when this lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual's room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at nighttime. Also, the bathroom in the girls' room must include a lock of their own. No, includes, whatever. Uh, finally, we prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. And for the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map of the boys' vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls. For the boys, we bleed a strong blow to the head with any tool should be ample. Don't think, just feel. Let's all enjoy ourselves. I crumbled up the sheet of paper and threw it in the trash. Just an everyday trash can. Okay. Nice. You can check your drawer for the toolkit, I think. Oh, right. I completely forgot about that. Thank you. I think you 
you've got everything. Miss anything? Uh, final thing in the entire room. Alright, and we're done. So wait, there's a lock on the inside of the door, too? Like, we have to use the key to get out of the room? Mm -hmm. I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be... This is my assigned door room. dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. So that answers the question. The next question is, what's everyone else up to right now? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get out of here. I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others, but there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Damn, no painting shot. More an anime. Oh, uh, really, Cass? Sayaka? Sorry. Are you okay? I, I'm fine. I hope you're okay. I forget that that's what Nagi sounds like. Sorry yeah. about that. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood slowly. Are you okay, Sayaka? Are you hurt? Mm, you make it sound worse than it is. Completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built up some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good, then. But are you okay? You know, for when Mondo hit you? That's true, I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Oh, uh, I'm fine. That's Nothing good. wrong here. That's good, I was kind of worried. Thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Well, if you're really feeling better, I was hoping you could come to the dining hall. The dining hall? After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we'd each found. So, does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. Good, I'll go on ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. I wish it didn't slow down on everything that you can interact with. I just want to be sure that this is locked. Everyone's meeting up at the dining hall, okay. I just can't interact with it. Alright, well, I guess we head in now. This must be the dormitory dining hall. It looks pretty clean, so that's good. I guess it's not really important right now with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much of a choice. I guess we should just wait here for now. Okay, let's just wait here. Huh? You heard that? I'm psychic. Like I said. Come on, I was just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Sure you do, bitch. Is it really just intuition? To be fair, that's exactly what amazing intuition is. It's psychic. It's kind of sudden right now, but here comes the tutorial. Right now I'd like to talk about reactions. You're going to be talking to Sayaka, right? Well, if you're talking to her and some purple words are going to appear, here's how they work. Oh, are you familiar with reactions? Well, just in case, let me explain. When purple words show up... <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> does this really put us in a loop? Okay, no. That was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I'm glad that they kept that, that up. Yeah. <laughs> kind of looking like it was cycling through the same thing, but changing ever so slightly. It was nice. Seven o'clock at night? If I see. Without being able to look out a window, I've lost all sense of time. If I have to stay here in this place for too long, I might just go crazy.
Ah, nice. Also, you said these people were only like one dimensional or whatever. These people are at least two dimensional. No, I said they weren't. I said it's almost like they're complex characters and they're not one dimensional. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're at least two dimensional. She even has two layers of two dimensionalness. <laughs> Considering her shadow is not attached to her body at all. Yeah. It's Shadow Link. She's about to come out and just fucking kill her. <laughs> She's motherfucking donging her off a of Peter Pan. I was honestly thinking it was like a stand or something, but yeah, I can get down for that. Motherfucking, not everything has to be JoJo's reference. Hey, um... Not everything has to be a Zelda reference, so says the, like, biggest Zelda fan here. Yeah, bitch. By the way, yeah. Makoto... Huh? Uh... What is it? Well, it's just that... I know this is kind of continuing the self-introduction thing, but I wanted to ask you something. What did you want to ask me? Makoto, did you happen to go to Blacker Junior High? Were you maybe in class two? Yeah, actually, I was. I knew it! I went there too! I was in class four, though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was that she remembered me. We'd never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. Hey, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm just surprised as all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. We went to the same school for three years, of course I remember. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, um, I don't remember a huge amount of my classmates. To be fair, you didn't go to well, school for three years. Well, high school. Uh, two and a half. Then I went to college instead because I was bored and also didn't like people. Well, that's true, but there's a lot of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm an average at everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange? That's... Huh. She started giggling even louder. Then some... That somehow mysterious smell of hers made my heart grow calmer. Her smell was the nicest smell I'd ever seen. Anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about all this. You're amazing, Makoto. No, I'm really not. I'm nothing at all compared to all of you ultimates. But you're the one who helped me find my courage again, not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. And to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. Huh? My assistant? Yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can, so let's get out of here together. When she says things like that, it just gets me pumped up. It's my penis pumped up. I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. <sighs> Almost like he'd timed it. Taka threw open the dining hall door right as Sayaka said that. Hey. Ah, Makoto, Sayaka! So you two got here first, huh? Too bad. I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just means I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time, I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. Phoenix right for the win. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? Justice prevails is... it doesn't matter. And soon after that, everyone else came strolling in, one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting! Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here! Hold on a sec. Wait, hold on a sec. Oh, she already said that. I, yeah. Also, I just realized that uh, Celeste had blue hair in that picture. Oh, I didn't look at Celeste. Mm. Yeah, her hair was definitely what blue. What are you talking about? What about, um, what's her name? You know, the silver-haired girl? Oh, yeah, Kyoko. <laughs> what about her? She's not here. What? 
It took another walk around the dining hall. Sure enough, she was nowhere to be seen. I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? But everyone just shook their heads. Wait. Wait, so nobody's seen her? Why is it Kyoka showing up yet? Could it be because... Yes, indeed! <laughs> is it possible? Was she really... No, no, I'm just overthinking things. Darn it, Kyoko! You're really gonna be late like this on your first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't even tell anyone she would be late! Most unbecoming personality trait! You're being a real jackass right now, you know that? Well, what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything! Now then, I declare the first session of the Hope's Peak Academy briefing meetings has begun! Makoto, actually, first of all... I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Hmm? What's up? I feel like I really have become your personal assistant. Don't you agree? I've done literally nothing, but you know. I yeah, may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. Whatever you say, my I mean my Zeno. No, you've already done so much as my assistant. And that's what we're going to call it for the second episode. Boop, I figured boop, that's boop, a good boop. spot. <laughs> I figured that's a good spot. And also, I made a, two Phoenix Wrights jokes in the past, like, four minutes. So, I need to take a short break. That's pretty gay. <laughs> Alright. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>